this video, we'll discuss creating texture in watercolor painting. I will do it two ways, just using watercolor and also by adding an opaque white. At the end, you'll be able to compare the results and give me your opinion which one you prefer. I will be painting this peach, it has plenty of very interesting texture. I found this photo on free reference photo for artists group on Facebook. I will paint two peaches side by side at the same time so you can see this whole process and compare. In both versions I will start wet on wet. I will start as usual with object color. This subject is pretty interesting. There is a lot of color variation. So I will try to capture all this as accurately as possible. The top is very light. There are some yellow spots and then there is that peach color, which of course I don't have on my palette, but I think I can get pretty close if I mix New Gavoche with Opera Pink right there on paper. And then as the peach turns away from us, it gets redder, but the red is cool. So I am using Crimson Lake and maybe I can transition to pure Opera Pink in some areas as well. I'm working with the flat brush so I can pick up intense colors from the palette and dropping it in a, on wet paper. I only wetted the area where the peach is. And on the bottom, the color gets really cool. So I'm adding a layer of royal blue and then I will paint my crimson lake on top of that. I'm hoping when everything dries and I will be creating the texture. In this version, I will be creating texture by lifting paint. I'm hoping I will get that fuzzy texture. Let's paint the stem where the leaf is attached. I will have to wait a little bit before I can work on the leaf. I don't want it bleeding into my peach and ruining everything. So while this first version is drying, let's work on the second one. I will basically do the same thing. I will drop object colors on wet surface. I'm going to speed up this uh, portion of the video because you already saw what I did. The only difference will be here on the bottom. I will use magenta permanent on the bottom because on this one I will be using some white gouache to create the texture to kind of dry brush it on. I don't feel that I need blue there. I just need the object color. All right, the second peach is drying. Let's paint the leaf on the first one. A little bit of viridian mixed with lemon yellow gives me that really bright green color. I think the second peach is dry enough. I can paint the leaf there as well. Just leaving a little bit of a border between the peach and the leaf. And we can show the veins on the leaf and a little bit of shadows that are there. I'm not going to concentrate on the leaf too much. And this exercise is to figure out how to do this fuzzy texture. And since my peach is dry, I can paint the cast shadow. I'm not using gray or anything like that. I am just using a cooler version of the object color, which will be magenta permanent. To neutralize it for dark accents, the stem is pretty dark and it casts some shadows. There on the peach, I neutralize magenta with its complement and Viridian works good for it. I already used it for the leaf, so might as well use it to paint the stem on the peach. Maybe a few drops to make the shadow a little bit darker. I'm really enjoying working on this painting. It seems a lot of times when I paint something, it's very complicated and this is fairly easy painting. It's really nice to paint something simpler sometimes that doesn't require a lot of time and effort. You feel like you did something creative without committing too much time to it. All right, here's my cast shadow. Let's work on the left side peach. I'll do the same thing. I'm painting the stem. Let's paint some veins and some shadows on the leaf. My second peach ended up being slightly different shape for some reason. It's a little more stout than the first one, but it's okay. They don't have to be exactly the same. I 
I feel on this second peach I need to darken the core shadow so a little bit more magenta permanent and I can also paint the cast shadow. The fuzz on those peaches is light. It's kind of off-white. I think to show my peach to its best advantage, I think it will be better if I had darker background. So I'm going to apply just a light wash of the same mixture of um, magenta permanent with my viridian just to create a hint of the background. I'm not going to cover the whole sheet, but I'm just going to apply a light wash around my peaches. All right, and now we can work on the texture on the first peach. What I'm going to do, I have a flat synthetic brush and I have some clean water. You can see it on the screen, it's there on the right hand side. And I also have a paper towel in my left hand. I'm painting with my right. So I am wetting an area with a damp brush and I scrub lightly to lift paint, which I then wipe on my paper towel. Then I pick up a little clean water and I do the same thing again in the areas that I want to lighten and where I want to show that texture. And these areas, they not only start to lighten, but because watercolor has, this is called press watercolor paper, 300 pounds, it has pretty pronounced texture the texture starts to show and I get that illusion of fuzzy surface. Now that my certain areas are lighter, I see that other areas need to be darker. So that coarse shadow needs to be a little more pronounced. And then I'm fading it out to blend with those areas where I created texture. And I think the background can be a little bit darker. So let's add a little more paint there. And that was a little too much. I lost my cast shadow, but it's okay. I can add a little pigment there as well. Okay, so this is my first peach. The second one I am going to use white gouache. I have some in a cup. It's dry, so it's not fresh gouache. I know I always tell you that gouache needs to be fresh and creamy, but in this case it's actually better if it's dry. That's why it's important to stash some dry gouache, not throw it all away, because sometimes it comes in handy, like in the situation for creating a texture. So my brush is damp and I'm picking up a little bit of gouache. So basically I'm kind of dry brushing it because I obviously don't want these textured areas to be white. I want to just slightly lighten them and create that kind of veil of gouache on top. It's a little tricky. If you've never done it, it might be a good idea to practice on just a piece of scrap paper first. Like paint a few watercolor squares and or circles and just test gouache but i think this is a valid technique and it works you can let me know in comments what's your preferred method and you will see finished paintings in just a second side by side and you can tell me which one you prefer the one with gouache or without i think the advantage of using the second method would be that it's way faster. On the first one, I trimmed the video a little bit so I don't bore everybody to tears with every brush stroke, but I spent probably a good 20 minutes lifting paint uh, because you have to be very precise. So it's not a, a fast process. With gouache, it's a lot faster, but of course it's different look. Gouache is an opaque medium, so even if we apply it lightly, we lose some transparency, but I think the result still looks sufficiently realistic. Here they are with gouache and with just pure watercolor. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one here on Tamirop Studios channel. 
Help other artists to see this video by liking or sharing it. To see future videos, subscribe and click the bell button to be notified when they're published. Thanks again and stay creative!